are you looking to become a data scientist but you don't know where to start? Well, in this video, I want to give you a straightforward, no nonsense, non fluff learning roadmap that you can follow that will help you break into the industry. By the end, you have a clear roadmap and learning framework along with the best courses and resources to use that will actually allow you to reach that data scientist job a lot quicker. Let's get into it. A hill that I'm willing to die on is that statistics is probably the most important area you need to know as a data scientist. New machine learning trends come and go, technologies often change, but one thing that's been a staple in the industry is statistics, and it's been a staple for centuries now. According to Wikipedia, statistics is a discipline that concerns the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. I mean, given the title is data scientist, it's pretty obvious to see how like impactful data and statistics is to that profession. So the areas you need to learn in statistics is one, summary statistics. So these are things like mean, mode, median, standard deviation, ketosis, just anything that summarizes data. Then you should learn about visualizations. So this is all the type of graphs, plots like bar chart, pie chart, line graph, stack bar charts, just any way of visualizing data is what you should learn. You should also be familiar with probability distributions and the main ones you should know are normal, Poisson, gamma and binomial. These are the ones I use most often and they're pretty much the main ones you'll find in the industry. Probability theory is another area you should learn. It's quite big, but the main concepts you should really grasp are things like maximum like estimation and the central limit theorem. Hypothesis testing will be a very crucial thing for you to learn because if you're gonna work as a data scientist on experimentation, you really need to understand how hypothesis testing work. So things like critical values, significance levels, Z test, T test, chi-square test, just the whole framework around how hypothesis testing works. Because like I said, if you're doing any form of AB testing, you're doing a hypothesis test. So it's well worth learning it. And finally, the last area you should learn is Bayesian statistics. This area is quite big on its own. And I feel like a lot of people just throw around the word Bayesian without really understanding what it means. So I really recommend you learn some of it. And there's, you know, like I said, it's a massive area, but things you should learn are like Bayesian theorem, conjugate priors, uh, MAP, Bayesian regression, just kind of like the main fundamentals of Bayesian statistics and how it works. As I mentioned in the beginning, I want to make this roadmap really, really simple. So I don't want to give you so many resources that you feel overwhelmed. So to learn all the following stats or the previous stats I just mentioned, I really recommend you check out the Practical Statistics for Data Scientist textbook. I've recommended this book till, you know, till the cows go home. It's the best book for statistics if you want to be a data scientist because one, it teaches all the information I just mentioned. Two, it's specifically targeted to data scientists. And three, it has coding exercises in Python. So you really get hands-on experience. However, there is one caveat in that that book does not cover Bayesian statistics. And for that, I really recommend the Think Base book. I took this book and around three years ago and it's amazing. It's very short and like the Practical Statistics for Data Science book, it's based in Python and it's like all these coding examples in Python. So you really get hands-on experience in applying Bayesian problems in, you know, in Python like you would in a real job. So those two books is what I recommend. Just stick with those. Don't don't question it. Don't ask me in the, in the comments, like, do you, do you recommend this book? No, those two books, I've used them both. They're amazing. Stick with them and just start. Don't ever complicate it. So statistics by nature is quite an applied discipline, but sometimes you need really good understanding of some pure math concepts to really understand what's going on behind the stats. And so for that, I recommend you learn some of the pure maths. And the two main areas you should know are calculus and linear algebra. Calculus is how machine learning algorithms actually learn under the hood. So if you really understand how models kind of train or how they are trained, then learning calculus is essential for you. And the areas you should learn are, so what is a derivative and like how do you find derivatives and like what is differentiation, like that whole understanding of that area. You should also learn the derivatives of common functions like polynomials, sine, cosine, logarithm, just all the standard functions, you should really know them pretty much like that. Like you would know two plus two equals four, for example. You should also study turning points and what determines a turning point to be a maxima or minima or even an inflection point. You should also really understand chain and product rules because these are the main kind of concepts behind 
gradient descent and also backpropagation, which is used to train all the big neural networks. And as a byproduct, all the large LLMs we have nowadays with like ChatGPT and Claude. And finally, for differentiation, you should also understand partial derivatives and also multivariable calculus. So instead of having y equals x or function or y equals function of x, you have y as a function of x, z, a, whatever. So like multiple kind of variables. And that's kind of the heartbeat of, like I said, neural networks and also many other algorithms like linear regression. If you don't know that, then you have a really good understanding of or the fundamental background understanding of how we apply learning algorithms in machine learning. And the other side is something called integration. So you basically want to learn all the same things, but for integration. So things like what is integration, the integral of common functions. You should learn things like integration by parts and substitution. Basically just everything around integration that you learn for differentiation. They're kind of like opposites of each other. After you've done calculus, then you want to learn some linear algebra. Linear algebra is all about basically vectors, sets, matrices, and all how they transform in linear spaces. I know it seems very vague, but once you start working through linear algebra, you understand what I just said actually means. The areas you should learn are vectors, so and all the operations, like the magnitude, orientation, dot, product rule, just basically how to work with vectors and their common features. In a similar fashion, you should also learn matrices and also all the operations. Matrices are basically just n-dimensional vectors, right? So everything you learn for vectors, learn for matrices. And there's also some further operations like transpose, trace, decomposition, things like that you should also learn from matrices which don't really exist for vectors and finally this area is a bit harder to grasp but it's really really important and that is eigenvalues and eigenvectors these kind of what concepts you can say are very important machine learning because their main ideas that underpin pca or principal component analysis which is used throughout machine learning and it helps you select features or reduce features which are kind of not adding anything to your model in a previous video, I recommended a lot of textbooks to learn all that maths I just mentioned. But looking back, a lot of those textbooks are quite dense and they're all kind of, you know, almost like university style and all the mathematical derivations are there. And to be honest, like I said earlier, that's not really needed. That's why I now recommend the mathematics for data science machine learning specialization by Deep Learning AI. It's the same company behind the deep learning and machine learning specializations run by Andrew Ng. So you're gonna be taught by very, very good people. This course is tailor specific for data science and the exercises are in Python. It skips all the unnecessary theory and focuses on learning the content you actually would use in the real world. If you're serious about landing your first job as a data scientist, a very good course to learn all the required skills is DataCamp's Associate Data Scientist with Python Track. I've been recommending DataCamp for ages now and I can confirm now their hands-on interactive way of learning makes all the difference when studying complex topics like data science and machine learning. This track is designed specifically for aspiring data scientists. You'll start with the essentials like Python basics and data visualization and manipulation and slowly build your way up to more complex topics like hypothesis testing and predictive analytics with scikit-learn. What I love about DataCamp is that you're not just passively watching videos. In the track, you're actually coding on real data sets, solving real problems and building a portfolio of over 11 projects that you can showcase to potential employers. Even better, the track prepares you for DataCamp's Associate Data Scientist certification, which is industry recognized and a great way to show your credibility to recruiters. If you want a structured interactive learning experience that takes you from zero to job ready, then I really recommend you check out DataCamp's Associate Data Scientist with Python Track. I will leave all of this linked in the description below for you to check out. There are two and only two programming languages that you should learn, Python and SQL. For Python, keep it simple and learn the fundamentals. That is variables and data types, Boolean and comparison operators, control flow and conditionals, for and while loops, and then functions and classes. For SQL, you also just literally want to learn the fundamentals. And for SQL, the fundamentals are pretty much what I use to this day because it's a very small language and you only need to know the core functions to do all the complex analysis that you need on the job. So let me give you a list of all the operations and concepts that you should learn. First one is select star from, which is like a standard query. Alter, insert, create, which is used to modify tables. Group by, order by, 
you use this all the time, where and or between in having, so just how you filter tables, average, count, min, max, sum, so all the aggregate functions, full join, left join, right join, outer join, inner join, just all the types of joins basically. And finally, you wanna learn some of the date commands. So date add, date diff, just how you would subtract and add dates together basically in the language. Now, there are many introductory courses in Python and SQL, and to be honest, you can just pick one and start because they'll teach you all the same things. If you want a personal recommendation from me, then I recommend you check out W3 Schools or the free CodeCamp videos on YouTube. They're free, I've used them in the past, and they're really good. But like I said, any intro course in Python or SQL will teach you the exact same things. So the main thing is you just pick one and get going with it. As well as learning Python and SQL, it's well worth investing some time in learning other technologies that you use on the job. Now, there are many tools and every company is different, but I'll give you a list of the most popular ones and also how you should go about learning them. The first one is Git and GitHub. Virtually every single company in the world uses this for version control. So I really recommend you learn it because you'll use it from pretty much your first day on a job till hopefully your last day on the job. The second one is Bash or Zshell. Majority of companies will use Unix-like systems for their terminal. So you should be very comfortable in being able to work in a command line and write basic commands. And finally, I recommend learning Python, Python for poetry, because you need to learn how to manage environments, dependencies, and Python versions, because that's really important and it's pretty much used in any software project in the world. To learn Git and also Bash and Zshell scripting, I recommend you check out these two free CoCam videos. And to learn poetry, UV, and Python, I recommend you check out these real Python articles or tutorials that will walk you through basically how, to, how they work. And don't worry, all these resources will be linked in the description below for you to check out. Right, now it's time for the fun stuff. Machine learning is a massive field and you can't learn everything even if you dedicate your whole life to it. To be a data scientist, like I said throughout this whole video, we only really need to know the fundamentals and a little bit of deep learning. Forget about learning transformers, LLMs, diffusion models, etc. That is not necessary for the majority of entry level jobs and to be honest, all jobs as a whole. Focus on nailing the basics as that transcends to everything else. To this day, I still use basic regression models and so do many other senior and staff level machine learning engineers at my company. It's all about application and really understanding your problem not using the latest flashy models when they're not really needed. So the key algorithms you need to learn in this area are linear, logistic, and other types of polynomial regression, decision trees, random forest, gradient booster trees, just all the types of tree algorithms out there, support vector machines and neural networks, k-means and k-nearest neighbor clustering algorithms, and learn some key concepts like regularization, bias versus variance, and cross-validation. The following two resources I'm going to give you is pretty much all you need. So again, I recommend you go through these iteratively and really understand what's going on. And these two resources, like I said, are literally all you require to learn all the machine learning knowledge I just gave to you. The first ML course I recommend you take is the Machine Learning Specialization by Andrew Ng. To be honest, you can get away with just doing this course. It's that good. It's the one I took when I first got into the industry. And it's, like I said, probably the best course out there on machine learning. The second resource I recommend is probably the best textbook out there on machine learning. And that's the Hands-On with Scikit-Learn, Keras and TensorFlow. Again, I've recommended so much. It's by far and away the best book out there. And kind of like the Andrew Ng course, you can get away with probably just using this textbook to learn all the information you need on machine learning. In my opinion, deep learning is kind of optional but I know many of you are interested in that area, so I've added it in here for completeness. I personally wouldn't invest too much time on deep learning because it's really easy to kind of just waste your energy and kind of get lost in the realm of all the latest developments when you don't really need to focus that at the beginning of your data science journey. So what I recommend you learn is deep learning concepts that have stood the test of time, i.e. ideas, frameworks, and models that have been around for at least a decade. None of this new AI nonsense that may not be here in a few years time. Focus on learning things that have been in the industry for a while because they're clearly gonna stay in the industry for more while, right? Because they're kind of still a test of time, like I just said. So there are kind of three main things you should focus on. The first one is convolutional neural networks. These are mainly used for image detection and computer vision. 
Then recurrent neural networks, these are mainly used for sequence models like language, time series, etc. And then transformers. You can argue transformers supersede RNNs and CNNs, but transformers are the latest kind of state of the art underlying model that is a reason or that are used behind like things like GPT, LLMs, and they're basically just, like I said, the best supervised learning model out there at the moment. To learn those deep learning concepts, I recommend you take on the Deep Learning Specialization course, which is also by Andrew Ng, and it's a follow-on course from Machine Learning Specialization. Machine Learning Specialization is the best machine learning course. This Deep Learning Specialization is pretty much the best deep learning course out there because they're written by the same author, same company, and the teaching standard is just amazing. So yeah, probably the best course you can take on deep learning. Again, the best textbook on deep learning is that hands-on ML with scikit-learn, Keras, and TensorFlow. This will teach you machine learning, but also all the deep learning concepts. And it also even dives into reinforcement learning in the end. So again, the best textbook probably out there on ML. And if I had to give you one textbook to study anything in the whole field, it'll be this one. So. Those two resources is all you need. Once again, just pick those two. Either one will actually do, but if you do both, then your machine learning knowledge will be, and deep learning knowledge will be excellent. If you go through everything in this video I just mentioned, then your data science and machine learning knowledge will be phenomenal. And to be honest, it'd be very hard to master every single thing I mentioned in this video within a year. But the goal is not to master it, just to gain the fundamental understanding and intuition behind all these concepts so you can apply them to real world projects. However, having this knowledge is not enough to land you a job. You need to build projects and have a really solid portfolio in order to do that. And if you're interested in understanding exactly the type of projects, frameworks, and how to structure your portfolio to land a job, then I recommend you check out this video on screen here, which I'll detail the exact processes and frameworks you should follow. I'll see you there.